you for having me on, Patrick. I, I appreciate the opportunity to speak today, and thanks for everybody to, for joining. Um, I don't have any slides today. I'm just going to be speaking to, to camera uh, to tell you a little bit about uh, Cybin and, and what we're doing, and then happy to take any questions at the end. So my name is Doug Drysdale. I'm the CEO of Cybin Corp. Cybin is a, a life sciences company focused on developing uh, psychedelic pharmaceutical products to treat mental disorders. And what we see in front of us right now is uh, what I think is an incredible opportunity uh, to transform the way that we treat mental illness. It's an opportunity that has been really 50 years in the making uh, with thousands of studies done now over the last, since the 40s at institutions like Johns Hopkins and NYU, uh, Imperial College. And uh, now's really the time, I think. Now that I think the time is right for psychedelics to really make a difference in mental health. <clears throat> and a couple of reasons I think that. The first is we're seeing a, a definitely a shifting legal landscape. Uh, for example, six patients in Canada that have been granted Section 56 exemptions to use psilocybin mushrooms uh, for their end of life depression and anxiety, which is obviously fantastic news. We hope that we'll see a, a class exemption uh, coming uh, in the future so more, more patients can get access. Um, we've seen FDA grant breakthrough status now to three companies uh, for psilocybin and for MDMA studies, which is great. And, and we're seeing psilocybin and uh, psychedelics on the ballot in Washington, D.C., in Oregon, uh, and most recently in Ann Arbor. Now, I also think we're seeing <clears throat> a more open cultural awareness of mental illness. Um, if there's one good thing that's come out of this pandemic, it's that I, I see across many people that I know an increased awareness of, of and prioritization of health and wellness. And mental illness seems to be at the top of that list. It's great that we're finally having this conversation. You know, I'm seeing more conversations um, in main media, uh, in our schools, in our workplaces, and we're chipping away uh, at the stigma of, of mental illness. Um, and in my mind, you know, this transformation, uh, this, this journey can't happen fast enough. We, there are 450 million people around the world suffering from mental illness. One in five US adults, that's 47 million people suffering from mental illness today. And according to the WHO, something like one in four of us will experience a mental or neurological disorder at some point in our lifetime. So you know, this is a uh, tremendous, uh, tremendous opportunity to make a difference for those folks. But with that opportunity comes uh, an incredible level of responsibility. You know, in my mind, we just can't screw this up. Um, you know, we have one shot at this and a small number of companies that are Developing treatments, uh, psychedelic treatments for, for mental illness, need to act responsibly. And uh, at Simon, at Simon, we 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 take that responsibility very seriously. Um, you know, it's uh, we know it's a stake, and we will do everything we can to uh, uh, to bring our approved treatment to market. And and frankly, that's why I joined Simon. Uh, um, for me, uh, I can't think of a better way to contribute to global well-being. Uh, I personally have family and friends that have suffered from uh, from depression and from addiction, and I've seen them suffer over the years with with really woefully inadequate treatment. And we really now truly have an opportunity to make a difference. And I'm happy to bring my background to this this space to help. Uh, I've been in healthcare about 30 years, uh, the first 10 years in Europe, and 20 years uh, here in the US. I've had the pleasure, the honor of running three different pharmaceutical companies, both public and private. Uh, I've helped bring dozens of, of pharmaceutical products to market and have raised about $4 billion uh, to make that happen. Uh, and I'm very lucky at Simon to be uh, supported by a strong team of scientists and entrepreneurs and marketers and policymakers uh, that are really getting behind the mission uh, to bring our treatment to market. And, and that's our goal. Um, our goal is to make our psychedelic treatment um, broadly accessible. And uh, what does that mean? Broadly accessible to me means that these treatments will be reimbursed by governments and payers and insurance companies. 
Now, unfortunately, to make that happen, we have to go through a regulatory process. Uh, I think there's a, some misconception out there that if a drug comes from nature, it doesn't need to be developed. Um, but the reality is that we have to jump through these regulatory hoops. Um, the good news is, though, is that uh, these pathways are well defined. They're tried and tested, uh, and it involves running controlled clinical studies. It involves collecting <clears throat> safety and efficacy evidence and letting science lead the way. And that's what we're doing at Cyber. So our lead clinical program is a sublingual film version of Cinefiden that we will be studying uh, next year, starting in January, um, in patients with major depressive disorder. Uh, our study will recruit 120 patients and we'll run through the end of 2021. <clears throat> so why, uh, why sublingual? Well, first of all, if you give uh, if you give psilocybin orally, say with a capsule, fifty to sixty percent of that drug is lost to metabolism, uh, just wasted, gone. And so, by uh, delivering uh, psilocybin sublingually, so underneath the tongue between two membranes, uh, the top and bottom, then uh, not only do you bypass the GI tract and the liver, and uh, have the ability to to dose far less of the active ingredient, which is Good from a side effect point of view, but also we expect to see a far faster onset of action that way. And and I think for patients that are highly anxious or depressed, not having to wait an hour for their capsule to, to kick in is is a very good thing. <clears throat> so let's let's drug faster onset of action. And then in in, in addition to our study, uh, we're trying to find an IND here in the US, uh, but we're not just focused on the US. It's obviously a very large market, very important market. Um, but, you know, depression doesn't discriminate. Uh, it affects people all over the globe. And so part of our mission is to bring our treatments to as many people as we can all around the world, starting in, in countries where uh, the legal framework is a little more accessible, uh, potentially uh, Brazil, Portugal, Spain, Netherlands. Um, we will see as, as, as the study progresses and the data uh, comes in. So that's our lead clinical program. Uh, beyond beyond uh, the, the, the drug product, we're also establishing a mental wellness platform of products and services. Uh, which will include um, tools like safety screeners, treatment protocols. Uh, we'll be offering supplements and nutraceuticals to help mental well-being. Uh, we intend uh, to offer devices and digital assets uh, to assist as well. And in addition to that, we're also developing a set of novel modules that we think will be the second or third generation of, of psychedelics down the road that have the potential to improve the patient experience. And that might be that might be a faster onset of action. It might be reducing the treatment period down from four to six hours to something maybe a little bit more manageable. It may be reduced side effects. So we'll we'll see how that de uh, development goes. But these are novel molecules that we're, we're quite excited about. So this is Simon's contribution uh, to the space. Uh, where we're we're planning to we're working with everything we can to deliver the first commercially approved psilocybin product uh, globally. And I think we have the team and the science and certainly the determination to make that happen. And, uh, and with that, Patrick, I'm happy to answer any questions.